Ah, hello. Welcome to Photographs of the Unexpected. As you can see, I'm getting ready for my next shoot. And of course, I know how to use my camera. So off I go, ready to take that first shot. And what happens? Something unexpected that ruins everything. I'm sure you've encountered that situation for yourself. But I'm going to look at the other side of the coin. Yes, something unexpected, unplanned for happens, but this time it's for the good of the photograph, making something quite decent much better. And I'm going to show you a few examples of what I mean. So whilst you're looking at the pictures, I'll just carry on, if you don't mind, doing my research. A common example are rainbows, but you need the right sort of time, day and place. For the best effects, the sun needs to be low in the sky and plenty of showers. Then you get the classic arc, particularly near mountains and over water. Showing part of the rainbow strengthens colours, and for once it could be beneficial if someone walks into view, but of course in the right place. She was walking a white Jack Russell, but it was a distraction, so sorry, it had to be cloned out. I also have to suffer for my art by getting soaking wet. I don't belittle my audience by adding rainbows to landscapes from a computer, but rainbows can be manufactured in a natural way. Approaching the Emperor Fountain at Chatsworth, I was all set to take the classic view down Canal Pond to the house. The sun was out, but it wasn't raining. Suddenly, I was aware of a rainbow within the fountain. It was caused by gusts of wind blowing spray across the scene. I had to work quickly because it kept disappearing, but I could still get wet if standing in the wrong place. On the other hand, you don't want the slightest puff of wind if seeking the perfect reflection. When the weather forecast is for high pressure over the UK, then there is a good chance. Nevertheless, Bleetown is a rare example. I am something like a thousand feet above sea level in a mountain bus, a landscape prone to strong northerlies sweeping across the valley from the Langdale Pikes. Not a good place to be in bad weather. A morning mist also require a calm day and a cold night. Mist is more common in winter before the sun gets a hold on the scene, but I have experienced mist in August. If you are a dab hand with the movie button, give it a try. One of those scenarios that sometimes demands movement. Predicting sunbeams, sometimes known as angel rays, is difficult. Late in the day is best, and with extensive cloud cover punctuated by breaks that are not too large. Because the highlights occupy less than 50% of the composition, spot meter to avoid blown out highlights, preferably with an electronic finder. If still using an optical finder use live view on the screen. And so we arrive at the classic sunset, or indeed sunrise. It is not easy to predict the cracker. You need some cloud cover, but not too much. I reckon no more than 50%. Essential for capturing colour and adding interest. Overwater gives the photographer two for the price of one, or a strong foreground helps. When including the sun, do what everyone tells you not to do, and that is to stop down to f16 or 22. This risks diffraction, but in my opinion, unsightly flare is much worse. On the other hand, use the right lens for f8 or 11. 
I am not. A prime lens is better suited for sunrises and sunsets. Spot metering essential to avoid overexposure. But then the sun doesn't shine all the time, does it? Why not suffer for your art by standing like a fool in heavy rain for that shot that others dare not attempt? Make sure that your camera and lens are water-resistant, even if you aren't. Rainfall is heavier in a passing shower, and I had an ideal subject. Because of a strong wind, not only did I get soaked to the skin, but smoke from the engine is being blown in front of the train. It looks for all the world as if the whole train is going backwards. If you don't like getting soaking wet, then seek sanctuary in God's house for more than one reason. The softer lighting is best for these wonderful interiors. When looking for the big view down the nave, row upon row of chairs often spoil the view. Occasionally, cathedrals remove them for a few weeks, sometimes for a festival or an event, revealing spectacular spectacular patterns on the floor. If you can catch that period, it makes an enormous difference to the photograph. Check the website or make contact for more information, or you never know, next time you make a casual visit, you might be lucky. Aren't people, especially photographers, a nuisance when they walk into the picture? There you are waiting for a clearance, and at that magical moment another photographer stands in front of you. They too, yes, are photographers, but they can't see you and usually wear a red jacket. I can't remember how I managed an absence of people in Horse Guards Parade London. Luck, probably. But here is a more reliable tip. If the property doesn't close its doors until much later, and the light is still favourable, try taking the classic shot around 5pm. That was the case here at Blenheim Palace. An hour earlier, it was full of people making their way home, and that is what you bank on for success. As soon as a famous property opens up in the morning, that too might work. But the most amazing bit of luck, totally unpredictable, is a Brocken Spectre, and no, I am not using a filter. I climbed Ben Nevis on a perfect day, but just to thwart my ambitions, as soon as the summit was reached, it clouded over. What I hadn't realised, it had created the perfect formula for a Brocken Spectre. A projection, not unlike a rainbow, where moisture-laden cloud and sun mix to produce a stunning and magical effect. That is me, in the glory. How appropriate! And, if viewed by several people, you only see a shadow of yourself. You can understand why, in the early 19th century, mountains were regarded as the abode of evil spirits and hobgoblins, and witnessing this they would come running down the hill in terror, and it was only a projection of themselves. Ah, right, uh, has the program finished? hope you've enjoyed it, and I've given you a few thoughts, because when the landscape photographer leaves home with the best intentions in the world, you are completely at the mercy of the weather. Now, one little thing I do with my camera that might surprise you. I leave the camera on program. Program is not auto. Yes, like auto, it sorts out the exposure automatically if you want it to, but you can add in your other personal settings like white balance and exposure compensation. The reason for leaving the camera on program is that if something unexpected happens, then on program you're more likely to get a decent shot. So there you are, a few things for you to think about. Have a nice day, as I say, and see you 
at the next programme, whenever that is. And thank you very much indeed for watching. Goodbye for now.